Hello, my name is James Pikeway. Welcome to Potaholics, and it is PowerWorks time with Glenn Power from PowerWorks Automotive. We're going to be talking cars, everything from the shop floor to what you're thinking about buying. You're driving it. We're talking about it. This is PowerWorks. What do you think of that? This is PowerWorks. You like that? I like it. Good. Yeah, we can uh, get that recorded. <laughs> On a loop jingle. <laughs> hey, I, I, I need to come down and visit you at the shop. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Just don't make a mess. I'll paint the floor. And, uh, well, that's it. You, I, so listen to this. This is the, now I got a new task on hand because, you know, <laughs> everyone's into e-learning and all that kind of stuff. Forget about <laughs> e-learning. I no. noticed I got an email from my brother and he sent me yeah. a picture of his front yard the Subaru's out there. So uh, I, I noticed that he's got a little berm, a little hill that runs down to where the Subaru's parked. And there's a complete beautiful road that, that is right out front of the house. So they're keeping this thing out now. So I'm thinking what I need to do with the help of Dougie when I someday get to Canada, but I mean, I need your training now on one, because I need to be like the Grand Prix of auto maintenance installation guy with air tools, with a, a you know a nice a welding torch, and I need to be able to get this off a truck, wheel it down to the car, install the wing, and get it all back on the truck in lightning speed because I could be running for my life, but it would be worth no doing. Problem. Easy, just the. Uh hammer some some glue uh wood screws you can use wood screws they'll go they'll go straight in there oh you know what i i need to tap call and i just need to get an electric cordless drill that'd be perfect yeah exactly cordless drill with some wood screws get them straight in there no problem and if you're lucky you might get through some of the some of the wiring for the back lights as well so you'll like screw a lot of lights up as well well you know that, no that, that would add to some some of the fun you know especially if they started to yeah. pulsate when they start up the thing that would be great <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> you know the worst thing here is is my brother knows dougie my brother knows me and he and he in the back of his mind right now he's thinking you know this guy might not be joking <laughs> Yeah, this might happen. <laughs> and and you know what's going to even be worse is I know the the bedroom the the way the bedrooms are set up at his place. So any vehicle goes down that road in the middle of the night. Anything that's got more than you know Firefly engine in it, he's going to be up there on the porch in fear that there's you know. And if he hears any noise, any wind or anything, he's going to be in fear that I'm out there on Whoa. his driveway. This is all good, right? Because now you're getting the benefit of even if you don't actually ever do it. <laughs> because you see, once you've done it, you can relax. Then yeah. now we can relax. You're true, and <laughs> and the best part is, as as we were talking about your tool kit last week, I could probably just get all the tools I need right out of his own garage if I can get the darn thing open. Oh, that really, and then just don't put them back in the right place, and that was really <laughs> for a mechanic. That is honestly the worst thing you could do to him. He wouldn't even care. He, he would. He'd, he'd be obviously annoyed about the wing on the back of the BRZ, but then. He'd go into the shed or the garage, and he'd be like, "Why is my spanner there? And why? Well, no, it was rent, but why? You know, just put them in the wrong place. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. pissed him off. Oh man, you know, and and my my brother is is quite uh, emphatic about the cleanliness of both vehicles yeah. and and stuff. And I remember way back when he was he was rocking a a Buick Regal with the finest velour seats you've ever had. Well, I, I, so you're, we're thinking probably, I don't know, it must have been about, I don't know what kind of year that would have been. Pre it's got to be pre-1990s, but it might, maybe it was like an 88 or an 89, maybe a 90 something. I don't know. Who, who knows? Anyway, beautiful Buick, Re Buick Regal. And, uh, and I, I, you know, the missus and I are getting together and I guess we were dating. And he says, oh, you want to borrow the Regal? So yeah, it's like oh, yeah. make an impression. Yeah, so I get the regal. Well, we we decide to just go and you know check out a a park, 
and you know, you, you know, you want yeah. to go park beside the water and, you know, put down a, a blanket and maybe have a picnic and, you know, see what leads to what leads to what. Well, it turns out, it turns out the park was kind of closed. So it got the, got the gate open, but the, the park hadn't been mowed. They hadn't cleaned the grass in quite a while. So I took the Buick Regal in there anyway, figuring, you know what, it's got a big V8 in it. <laughs> we can make it. And, 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 you know, we, so we get out of there too after, you know, and it's very nice and we get, you know, you make sure it's all looks all nice on the outside. It's all clean. And then I get a phone call. I says, what, what were you doing in big, tall grass? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, the whole undercarriage of my car is covered in there's, there's hay sticking out of parts of the motor. There's, there's hay in the exhaust system. I might exaggerate just a little bit, but not really that much. And, uh, to this day, I hear about that. So, you know, yeah, yeah. he knows. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a, there's a, the old saying of never trust a mechanic with clean hands. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. That's fair enough. We all get dirty doing our job. But if the mechanic's toolbox is in disarray and his own car is a mess, definitely don't go to see him. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Exactly. You're pretty busy at the workshop. We, uh, we hadn't expected to be doing this over the phone and yet we are. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm rocking and rolling over to our, our favorite, Oh, well, no, it's not, because uh, there's more than one now, but a, a Swedish uh, furniture retailer to uh, get a few bits for the office. Very nice. Uh, and uh, still in the Ramadan, uh, the month of Ramadan here, so we're having early finishes uh, during the day, finishing at like three o'clock. Mm. And now just using the time, having cleaned the floor, probably the 17th time that I've seen the floor today <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just going to go over to Ikea. Hopefully they're not closed. I didn't have, I yeah, didn't no. have time to check on Google whether they're closed or not. Yeah. No, I don't think but, they're closed. I think they're, I think they stay yeah. open till, till the evening. I think you're good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to go over there, try and get these in the back of the van. I'll stay in there till tomorrow. And uh, thankfully we're in the Middle East. So I can leave the van open and no one would steal them. <laughs> uh, so they'll be fine till the morning. And then, uh, just projects. There's just all of a sudden projects. 970 Mini, uh, a Trans Am. Oh. I've got a 928 Porsche, which is an absolute pristine example of the 928. It really is. Um, really? Colin and Dan, Colin and Dan from We Will Fix It did a sort of spot check on the place today. Just dropped by, and um, I just said to them, just get in the 928 and smell it, like. It just smells like they do when they come out of the showroom. Oh, man. Uh, immaculate. Absolutely immaculate. And there's a GMC Typhoon, which... Really? I mean, talk about putting a brick on top of a rocket. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> a brick made of lead. Um, yeah, but that's that's quite a rare beast. And then I've got a Series 3 Land Rover in as well, which is um, an almost finished project with a few little niggles that, that the, the customer... Um, who also owns the GMC Typhoon and the 928. Uh, he couldn't get them rectified at his previous place. So he's made the shift to PowerWorks and uh, we're going to have to make sure we treat him right because we want all of his all of his vehicles on the road and want to put a smile on his face every time he gets in one because they certainly put a smile on your face when you look at them. Oh, man. That's, that, that's for sure. That, I, just the sound of that Typhoon, I know exactly what you're talking about. That is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> hold on for dear I mean, life. Man. Hold on for yeah, dear yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, when, when, when and it, it's, you know, the, the worst thing about the Typhoon for me, like, American cars, and we've said this before, I like that if I was going to have a Mustang, I'd have a V8, because what the heck is the point? But the only reason that's the case is because they kept with it, they stayed with it. But this this Typhoon's a, a, a turbo V6, yeah, which goes to show there's absolutely no reason that, that I mean, it, it, and it's 992, and it was doing 350 horsepower, which for an American car was a lot. Yeah, yeah, heck of a lot. And why did why why did they not just realise, you know, 30 years ago that yeah, smaller engine, forced air, charged air, and let's get let's go that way. But now nah, let's stick to the V8, and it's and it's crazy because you see the the Trans Am next to it with the big V8 in it. Think, eh, but it's not going to keep up with the Typhoon, is it? Yeah. So. Although, yeah, but although, I've always. What, what's the uh, roof like on the Trans Am? What's is this the T top or is this a solid? Uh, yeah, T top. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Come and see it tomorrow. You have to come and see it tomorrow, Jay. 
Yeah, we were going to have to do that. It's, it just sounds yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great. I mean, just, just, just put the dog in the car, bring the dog over. Dog can, dog can have a wander around. In fact, the dog can just go around and have a check if there's any pests that I haven't found. I mean, the Mini Cooper, uh, well, no, sorry, that's the Mini. It's not a Mini Cooper. The Mini came from New Zealand, and when we were going through all the parts that were in the back of it, uh, a spider jumped out. Oh, no. So I don't know. I don't know how worried we need to think, but it just looked like a wolf spider, so we're all good. Oh, nice. But, um, you, you had a couple yeah. BMWs in, in uh, you were do, you were covering a couple BMWs, the uh, 5 Series and an X5. Yeah, well, BMWs are BMWs, aren't they? they, they, they um, you got to love them and you got to hate them at the same time. Yeah, there's a lot aesthetically that you look at them and think, you know, I totally understand why people like them. Yeah. There's a lot of check on them. They, they, they do look the part often, more often than not. Although I don't know what the heck has gone on with the X4 and the X6. Uh, um, less I said, the better on that. But they, they, they just, they just have that. They just have that expensive kind of feel, yeah. and that goes all the way through owning them as well. You mm-hmm. know, the the, mm-hmm. the maintenance is quite heavy for the region, um, and this is just purely. This is just me using anecdotal data, if you can even give it the same data, but from what I can see from experience on the ground here for the last eight years, Jaguar Land Rover had a problem with the Range Rover. There was no doubt in it. Absolutely no doubt in it, especially even the one, the, the, the uh, L322 one and the, the BMW engine in it. Um, they just really weren't as reliable as I was used to them being. And again, that was anecdotally, but in the UK, mm. Mm. They were known to be very, very reliable, um, compare comparatively at least to here. But they just weren't that reliable. And and then the later model, the, the current generation, all the are in the empty quarter in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And from what I can see, it's worlds apart. The the, the improvement has been great, and it just goes to show how regional specific anything can be, especially reliability. Um, and BMWs just tend to suffer. Everything on a BMW is designed for the best they can be in terms of finish and comfort. What that sometimes means is the materials aren't as durable. Mm, mm. Um, so for suspension and, and oil seals on, on the BMWs, we tend to get a lot of issues with those. That's, that's always the issue that whether we're driving a Mercedes or a BM, I, I'm always concerned with the cost of servicing them in this environment. And I know that they're tested in this environment and I know that, you know, there's, there's loads of them around, but man, the service costing tends to be a little bit more than a Hyundai. Yeah, they are, but they are more expensive than a Hyundai. And, 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 you know, you would have been fair. Maybe it's, maybe it's, and it, yeah, it's probably still fair to say to this day that, there's a lot more engineering or let's say cutting edge engineering and tech when you go Mercedes, BMW, VW groups to a high on die. Yeah. There, 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 there is. And obviously, um, the, the, the production of the vehicle has a higher labor cost than, than the high on die would, let's say. So they are more expensive and they are classed as a premium brand. Um, but you know, it's, it's one thing to test the car here. That's that's fine and make your improvements here and there. But to actually develop a car based on R and D here, then that that is that for me for what Jaguar Land Rover have done with, with the Range Rover at least has it, certainly made a difference for them. Like I say, that that's anecdotally. That's just me thinking. Well, the age of that model now and how many I see compared to when I came here and the age of the L three two two comparatively now you'd see very, very few. Mm. Now, they may have sold a lot less, but I certainly don't think that's the case because you can't go a kilometre down the road without seeing one, can you? Yeah, so, no, no. Um, no, it's, it's, it's a... Look, if, if, I, if, if, I, if I could specialise and do just one thing, then I'd just be working on uh, VWs all day. Mm. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's, that's not what we're into. We're, we're, we're here to, like I say, with... with restorations and projects put people in the car that, that can just start it up and drive it constantly smiling um, and and for people that use their vehicle every day make sure that they haven't got to worry about being unsafe on the road and, and, and putting other people in danger and, and that's, that's what we're about so it doesn't really matter what the vehicle is yeah. uh, we'll take it in um, but 
interesting that we just got the BMW we just got a rush on them all in one go which is just, just the way it happened hey well you know what it's, it is what it is I, I actually was I've been walking by uh, Porsche Cayenne the last uh, for the last week that clearly someone took to task their drive uh their their tires and their dry flat tires and they yeah. uh, clearly drove it home the tires mutilated i'm looking at yeah. the, the side panel the rear side panel on this vehicle has got tire all over it and yeah. and i'm just looking at this going the rim is going to be shot the tires obviously shot the the quarter panel needs to be buffed out if if it hasn't gone right through the paint it's horrible looking yeah, yeah, the, the, those run flat tires again. Um, it's just one of those things where you know, there's either no space for the design, but more often than not, it saves on cost of production and yeah. and uh, also it, it, it can help get the the CO two emissions down a little bit. So people don't have a spare wheel, save weight, save cost, save CO two. So how can we get around that? So there was, you know, there was a time where we had the um, the the gel, and some cars still do have that gel. So mm-hmm. you get a pump, you then pump yeah. the gel in and put it out, and it and it seals the leak. But the run flat tire is basically you're running on train on train wheels at, at that point. Yeah. Um, and you've got basically two steel discs on the outside walls of the tire, uh-huh. and and they keep you they keep you off the you know, they keep your rim off the road. So uh, again, unfortunately, to mention it, we, I tend to see it on um, on X fives. Oh, really? They wear out. They wear out on the inside edge, and then the the, the vehicle comes in with an absolute wreck of a back tire. And the customers are often times said, "Oh, it's just a bit of a noise on the back. I think I might have a problem with the wheel bearing." Uh-huh. It's not. It's the tire, and and you know they have tire pressure monitoring to uh-huh. tell you that you've got a flat tire. So if you've got run flat tires, you're going to have tire pressure monitoring, so you know you've got a flat. But Again, because of the cost of repair on that, not everybody repairs it. So they take for granted that the light's been on for the last two years, so there's not a problem. And then, you know, before you know it, it's shredding a tire, covering your bumper in, in melted rubber. Yeah. And uh, it ain't pretty. Well, and, and I guess a lot of, in a lot of cases, people know, hey, I don't have a spare. I've got these run flat tires. And, and, but I'm always surprised by the fact that people don't realize that, yeah, if you've got a run flat tire and you've gone for it, you've, you've got a puncture, it doesn't mean you keep driving at 140 kilometers an hour. You've got to slow right down to a crawl, and maybe you really just need to pull over and get that thing on a, a recovery vehicle and get it to where yeah. it needs to go. Otherwise, it's going to cost you a fortune. I think from a, you know, for us to be responsible about it, we, we, you know, the first thing I would say is, you know, in the, in the owner's manual for the vehicle, it, it will tell you exactly what to do in the event of a flat tire message on the dashboard or a physical flat tire that you can actually see, um, and and you you need to do that. We we at PowerWorks we're going to offer uh, quote unquote training courses for people to to help them keep their cars maintained at home as 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 best as they can safely so show them show people things about you know checking oil levels that's not simple these days topping up coolant changing a spare uh, if you haven't got a spare what to do mm. and it's very important that people know and have a plan because sometimes when you get into that situation uh, if you don't know what you're going to do the panic becomes all the more yeah sort of severe if you like and and, and it makes it a, def- a difficult time so in a six-lane highway, if you're in the outer lane and you start to get a, a wander or a pull on the wheel because you've got a flat, that's panic enough. And by the time you get to the other side of the road and you've white-knuckled it all the way there, you can barely get your phone out to call for a recovery, let alone think about changing a spare or seeing what the actual issue is. So, yeah, people need to just be prepared. It's all about being prepared. Yeah, and that, that seems to be one of the, the big issues these days for sure. Oh, I got to tell you, you, you won't believe what just, I, I and not only do I need to come by and see the vehicles in your, your place, I need to make an appointment to bring in the old Wrangler, although I, I don't want to bring it in while the other Wrangler's there with that engine being changed, because I think that'd be bad luck. But, oh, that's uh, gone, that's gone, that was a little job, that's gone. Oh, excellent, then I don't have to worry about the bad luck. I, I, get, I get into my old Wrangler, I'm a little bit obsessed with uh, cleaning the windshield, 
And, uh, you know, so I, I pretty much own stocks in any of those companies that sell the windshield wiper washer fluid and because I only put that stuff in there, right? I'm not, you, I'm not using water. And I get in the other morning, going to do my fourth clean of the day probably, and uh, no motor. It doesn't work. It stopped working. Windshield, windshield wipers go beautifully, but, uh, you know, the, the, the motor is not pumping. And I just went, oh, you can't be serious. And I know a lot of people, are, well, I know it. Well, at least... <laughs> It's yeah, first world problems, right? So, <laughs> fortunately, we, we live in a place where the weather is actually pretty good. So if you clean the darn thing in the morning when you get up and go, you can probably make it all day, maybe two days without having to touch it again. But yeah, but just, just annoying, awesome. just annoying. Yeah. Well, look, things have to break. Otherwise, people like me wouldn't be able to earn a wage. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll, we'll get that sort of point. No that, that's, and, and look, that's not that's not going to be in, like replacing an engine sort of job. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, nah, that's nice. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I'm sure that this happened on my other Jeep uh, years ago. And uh, I, I remember the whole thing. So I can already tell you, you just got a hor- it all comes as one set unit. It doesn't come as a separate unit. It's the entire washing, you know, windshield wiper washer uh, container. Yeah. It all comes as one. And I remember having the discussion with the guy when he had to sell me that thing. Uh, and this would have been at AAA. You might have even been the guy who worked on the old yellow Jeep at that point. Uh, it probably was- wasn't me at that time. But um, well, this would be 2009, uh- 2009. Nah, 2012, I was there until okay. 2016. Okay. So yeah, 2009, 2000. Yeah. So you know, it was probably just before your time because it was, pretty, yeah. it was just, uh, well, it, you know what, actually 2009, it would have had a three year warranty or something like that. And I would have been there for the entire warranty. So that's 12. So it might've been that 2013 actually that it, uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Well, maybe then, I, maybe uh, you know, we're in Russia, dear. You might have been yeah, with yeah. Uh, my friend Gordon. Oh, I was absolutely, that absolutely. That's where I was. I was in Russia, because it's close to where I live. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and I remember at that point having the discussion with the guys and we went through the whole thing and they said, yeah, we just got to get a new one. And I was like, really? And he says, yeah, I know it makes no sense because it's just this little motor in it. And there, and you're the, you know, the, the, the bucket thing, the, the container is perfectly good, but you need a whole new thing. And it's like, all right. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> but, but the, the positive side was it just, you know, it unclips and you clip it back in. It's two little connectors and it's done. So, you know, the, yeah, the Jeep makes it pretty easy. Yeah, most things are easy on the Jeep, which is kind of neat. What what else is coming into the shop? You're you're brand new open. Yeah, we didn't really get a chance to do any sort of grand opening because uh, yeah, we just couldn't keep customers away, which is a good thing, right? We just had to, we just had things that were that were piling up on the sort of the last two or three weeks where I've been opening. Oh yeah, I'm open tomorrow. I've been saying that for nearly three weeks, and <laughs> yeah. there's always something goes wrong. So. You know, we've had to we've modified all the electrics, and we've had to upgrade we've had to upgrade countless things in there. And people were just waiting and waiting and waiting. And obviously, I, I don't expect people to wait forever. Yeah. So we had to open and, and take people in and get stuff done. And a couple of we will fix it vehicles being through with usual, just general, normal wear and tear stuff. And like I say, a couple of cool projects on the go. Uh, the mini should be a the mini should be fun if if the, if the customer decides to do the right thing and rebuild the engine. The, the engine's been sat in storage for ten years. Oh no! And and, and the, the the problem is that whilst un, unless somebody was able to say to me that you know I rebuilt that engine and then stored it, it, it genuinely is not for the for the cost and the time of building one of those little one liter engines it's not worth putting it in the car to try and start it to eventually get it to run when you've got the car set up properly mm. to find out that it's, that it's no good. Yeah. So while it's out, we'll just, you know, we, we've got to go to town cleaning it anyway. The body work's all been done. We've, we've taken this project in from sort of having the body work and cosmetic side done already. So we, we, we've got to clean the whole engine down and, and to do that properly, we're going to strip most of the parts off and then, before you know it, you're just talking head bolts and gearbox off, and then you can do, you can open it up and, and rebuild it. So that's what we're going to do. Well, that's what we're going to suggest anyway, and hopefully that's what we get to do. Is is engine rebuilding a is something that a mechanic looks forward to? Is that kind of like the a fun thing, or is that a real pain in the neck? It's very well. You can become you can get very zen doing it. 
because an engine's an engine. Okay, there's you know there's rotary engines and there's there's V engines, W engines, straight engines. There, there's different layouts of the of the same kind of thing. But they you know they all effectively are basically the same in terms of they have exceptional exceptional amounts of friction mm. that they have to deal with and so changing bearings checking tolerances making sure that things that are supposed to be round are still round making sure things that are supposed to be straight are still straight just basics like that and it's it's very very good you know there's there's a lot of you can go very far into it you know we can we could buy software for a, a CNC automated CNC machine and 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 do laser guided water jet cutting of components and ports in cylinder heads and changing the pistons and changing compression ratios and all this sort of stuff. You can go very, very far and race teams obviously have to do that and people are doing that sort of stuff. But take a standard engine and rebuild it, strip it down, rebuild it and put it back as it as it should be or as close to as it should have been when it left the factory. That's that's relatively straightforward and it's and it is a big job and you do have to know what you're doing, but it's it's much less difficult than let's say changing an evaporator mm. on an AC system and taking the dashboard out. So yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a good job when you've got the time to concentrate and do it. And that's the, to be fair, it's the kind of job that you pull the doors shut at the end of the day and spend a few hours every night for a week or so doing. You don't really wanna I certainly couldn't do it. I mean, we're doing this on the phone. And my phone rang six times while I'm talking to you in the last 30 minutes or so. Yeah. I couldn't be doing that building an engine because I can't, you know, you need to concentrate. I need to make sure I've tightened something up properly or I've measured the tolerances properly. So it's a, it's a cool job and, and, a, and, a, and it's a, it's quite a relaxing job, but you have to be able to, to concentrate while you're doing it. That's always the challenge, isn't it? Especially when you're you're on the go and and uh, you know you got your new shop. You've you hey the we will fix it guys and the essential maintenance guys. Their fleet alone that could keep you busy every day. So it's yeah funny. yeah. There's always going to be there's going to be if there's if there's not one a day then I know I know I've annoyed Colin and Dan and they've sent them somewhere else. <laughs> And that, uh, so that's always the challenge, isn't it? The interruptions, the endless interruption. It's easy if, when you get interrupted to forget that you've done something or haven't done something and, and for something to, to slip through the cracks. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a genuine issue. You know, people, people rely on their vehicles. And so one of the problems we have for, for, from, from the point of a service advisor is a service advisor is obviously going to be greeting, receiving customers, explaining what process is, what we what we expect, understanding what we're expected to do, what the customer requires of us, explaining options, making job cards, collecting data, preparing estimates, invoices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then the service advisor's also got me chasing after them, saying, "What are we doing on this car? Can this customer collect it today? When does this customer want to?" And, and all these sort of things, where they've already probably written it down, but I'm making sure I double check so I know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in the time that I might give somebody a task to do, there's, there's two or three other tasks that come in, and it's very easy to forget. We're in quite a we're in quite a fast paced environment. Not always necessarily because there's just hundreds of cars coming in every day, but but because the cars that do come in, they need to be turned around as quick as we can, and we've got suppliers that we have to deal with and and everything else. So so having to do that now all on my own, whilst I get the business to a point where I can employ somebody to do it all, yeah. It's, it's going to be impossible for me to to sit and build an engine and be confident in turning the key. So yeah, it's doors closed. End of the day, a few hours every night. And of course, you got a family in there somewhere too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I forgot to mention the divorce at the end of it, but, yeah. but no, it's, it's it's good. You know, I'll uh, I, I certainly won't be teaching my daughters to to do it. That's a fact. They, they can go do something more meaningful like populate Mars or whatever they want to do but you know, go on one of Elon Musk's uh, astrological field trips that he seems to be uh, getting ready for it's funny when you're you're talking about the in, in a sense some of the advice and and in, in a sense some of the advice that we give on this show you posted up a wonderful post in into the whatsapp 
<laughs> that we we share. And and you know what's funny because as I was reading that, I was going, "What's the matter with us?" <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> basically yeah. why basically why we shouldn't be given this kind of advice. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a couple couple reads to realize, okay, yeah, oh, okay, I get where this is going. I think we've, I think we've been doing this too long. That was the problem. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, I mean, we 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 uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know 1% of what there is to know about the trade I'm in. Yeah. You know, and I'm fortunate enough to be in a position to uh, have, have been put in a position by a by a financial backer to to have my own business and and do things how I want to do and how we were talking about last week I just want to make it that if I can find that in just our little corner of the world I've made a little bit of a difference to a trade then I'm happy with that you know if my customers are happy then they're telling their friends then I'm happy with that that's, that's all I want from it I'm not you know I don't expect to I don't expect to change the world but that's not to say I don't come up with something that would potentially do that, but that's not what I'm in it for. I just in it to do the right thing and, and, and to, to do, to do my job as best as I can. And, uh, and, and the best thing about being a mechanic is it isn't rocket science. It's, it's not, it's just about to, to do it to the best of your ability. All that requires is a little bit of honesty and, and tell people exactly what they need to do and what they should be expecting and how you can best serve them and meet their expectations and and then and then that's it. You know, I, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna paint somebody's car. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna weld their chassis after a bad, bad accident. I'm not gonna you know do do anything or say that I'm gonna do anything that I can't do. Because mm. uh, anything I, anything that goes out has ultimately now quite literally got my name on it. Yeah. So, so it's, big- it's me big change in, in having that. I mean, you must, you must, you must look at things a little bit differently. Not that, not that it, you didn't look at them, you know, with, with a, a measure of pride and responsibility when you worked at any of the other places that you were both working at and running, but it's, it's got your name on it now. Like you said, it's, it's, it's the game is different. Yeah. yeah it's, it, that, that's the thing. I mean, people sort of understood, certainly when I was working at my, my most recent place before I started PowerWorks, I had 10 workshops that I was having to look after. Yeah. And, you know, so even just by a simple calculation, I can only spend 10% of every day in each one. And that doesn't account for driving in between them. So a sensible person can see automatically that, hang on a minute, it's going to be a case of two workshops a day. Yeah. Um, which means, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm oftentimes dealing with vehicles for friends or, or contacts or people that get in touch with me because they might have heard the podcast or they, they might have been recommended to me by a friend of a friend or whatever it may be. And, and I'm, and I'm, I'm dealing with their vehicle having sometimes not got the opportunity to put my hands on it. Yeah. And that, that was very difficult for me to manage. Um, because I did always have that when, when I was at AAA, it was one place that I looked after. We had two, but I only looked after one. So every vehicle that went out, I had a massive, massive part in making sure that the work was done, it was done properly, it was charged fairly, and it was quality checked. But that 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 wasn't the case at, at, at the most recent place. So I, I, I can't, you know, now I'm back to having the, let's say, luxury of being able to spend time on vehicles properly and know that I've... I've done everything I can personally to do that. Now, you know, the first few weeks I've been running around buying parts. I spent 45 minutes on the road just to pick some wiper blades up yesterday. But that's just the way it is. Things aren't in place and processes require people sometimes. And, and that one certainly does when it comes to parts purchasing. But we'll get there. Uh, and, and all that matters is that, that work goes out to a level of uh, quality that, that I'm happy with. Because if I'm happy with it, then, then I expect most customers will be overly happy. How many technicians you got working for you now, Glenn? Well, right now there's me and uh, two guys. So I've got Alan and Zisha. Um, I've also got a friend of mine who actually uh, worked at AAA with me called Ben. He's from the UK. And he's in there with uh, with me just working on some of the 
some of the stuff that you tend to get bogged down and stuck with, like classics, like restorations and things like that, they can very, very soon turn into epic dramas and sagas of a, of a job. And yeah. you really need to know that you've got someone that you can dedicate to that so that if I'm pulled away from there, Ben can slot in and, and get, get the work going. And we've worked, as I say, we've worked at AAA before together. Ben is from the older school side of things. So Ben is very happy playing around with uh, points and condensers and a carburetor. Oh, nice. Whereas I, you know, so he's, he's, he's into all that, which, you know, I'm fine. I can do it, but no, he's, he's <laughs> like, a, let's, let's not say the phrase, but he's like, a, he's like a pig in, in the brown stuff when it comes to this trans arm and this mini and, you know, he loves it. He, he really does love it. And that's what he's got passion for. And Hey, all the power to him is, is doing the work and customers are happy to get it done and, and we work on it quite well together. So we, technically there's four of us. Uh, my time's split between all the other jobs that we're doing, but that, that's not going to be forever. A couple of guys will start on there tomorrow, one for service advisor and one for parts, which will help. Mm. And then it's just waiting for the flights to start again so we can get uh, DJ, my friend, over from, from the UK and then we'll have a full complement of guys and my wife will oversee the business because she's she's much she's got a much better business head on her than I have, and uh, that's it. We'll be good to go. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, uh, it's it's that it's that dream come true. I know. I think as long as we've been doing our shows from podcasting and before that broadcasting, you've always you've always talked about a business. You've always talked about how you wanted to do this. So it's it's kind of nice to see it happening. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I got, I came here very naive at 25 years of age. No, uh, yeah, so it shouldn't be that difficult, should it? Yeah, I was 25. And, you know, I'd had it easy working for VW UK. I'd had it really easy. I'd had a great, great time there. Everything was perfect. The processes were, were foolproof and double safe and, everything was great and I knew what I was going to be doing every day in terms of what kind of vehicles I was going to see and it was fantastic. I never needed anything and information was clear. Direct connection to the factory, brilliant. And then I came here and it, it, I always thought to myself, even after the first six months, 12 months, I thought, you know, I can change the culture of things. I can change this and this and this. Unfortunately, staff came and went too, too often. Um, and, and before you, you know, get even 25, 30% into changing the way things are done, you've got two or three people changing jobs. Yeah. Um, hiring extra people, uh, downsizing, whatever it may be, however the business was performing. And I just realized that it, it was maybe the easy way out, but it was definitely going to be easier to start from scratch with a culture than try and implement my culture on, on an already existing business. Yeah. And that's, that's hopefully what we get to do. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's, as I said, you know, folks who've been listening and will continue to listen are, are, are going to be following along the journey. And, and it's, it's just the good sage advice that keeps people coming back, which actually brings me to another question. And, and this is kind of an interesting one. You know, things come up on the old, internet every now and then and we got, I got two things the first one is it's kind of interesting in that I'm wondering if this product really is necessary if it really works or if it's just a gimmick and and the, the idea is do you think that you need a very dedicated special kind of wipe to get bird crap off your car or could you just use a baby wipe or anything like that? Do you really, is, you know, I'm, I'm seeing these wipes that are being advertised right now, box of 10 wet wipes, extra dry, extra wet, extra big for, uh, they're called bird poop remover drop wipes. Is this a gimmick, do you think? Or is this, is this something we actually need? Well, there's, there's, there's obviously a lot of damage that gets them to paint with uh, bird crap. I mean, that's, that's, that's a fact. And uh, my friend Mark, who's probably going to come over and do some detailing from time to time, that's probably his, uh, his worst nightmare. Really? So, yeah, I mean, I think it's alkaline rather than acidic. I'm pretty sure that that's the way it is. I think it's alkaline, but it damages the paint, it damages clear coat, and, it, and it's very, very 
very, very bad for, for your car if it lands on your car. It's not great for your skin either, I imagine. So if you've got some kind of wipe that's going to be maybe slightly slightly acidic that would then maybe neutralize the alkaline, I don't know how that would work. I've no idea, but a lot of things are gimmicks, but there's probably some benefit of it, I would think. So, because my thing was, I just thought, you know, if I have a baby wipe or I've got some kind of thing that I'm using, I just, you know, get at least get it off. And what what these guys are talking about, and, and hey, it looks like a cool product and, and not excessively expensive. But yeah. the idea no, that you don't that, want to damage the clear coat, you don't want to damage the paint as you're wiping the stuff off. And so yeah. these things help to neutralize. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what it is. And plus with it being um, sort of super wet, it's going to be less abrasive as you wipe it across the surface of the paint because it's going to soften the, the clear coat potentially. So yeah. it sounds like it might, might, might be a good idea, yeah. All right, there we go. Nice. The other one was something I found on boingboing.net. And uh, this was the Chenglai Nemeka electric car that uh, is being sold by Alibaba out of China. And uh, comes in at, at $930 plus an additional $350 for the batteries. Hey. It's like a, it's like it's like a budget version of a golf car. It's pretty much. It kind of looked like one actually. And I'm just thinking, yeah. the, the the guy who bought one of these, he said by the time he got it all said and done, got it all cleared, he said uh, it cost him three thousand three hundred dollars. But he said it was uh, it's it's kind of weird. He said it's kind of it's about eight hundred pounds, half the weight of a Nissan whatever he's driving, the smallest Nissan out there. And he, he said, essentially, it, it reminds him of a golf cart with actual seats and a dash and, and seats inside, too. Sounds, it sounds <laughs> horrific. <laughs> it looks horrific. It looks so horrific. I'm thinking this would be kind of cool driving around Murdoff here in Dubai. So bad you want to get one. It, it, it is exactly that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a zero. I mean... Ugh. Zero interest. In it. Although saying that, I went to change a battery for a friend on a on his Borg Ward the other day, which is a Chinese vehicle. Um, I forget. I think it's part of the G. Is it part of the Geely or Geely? How you pronounce it? I think it's part of that group. And um, everything under the bonnet, whether it's in collaboration or whether it's just blatant copy or theft, I don't know how you call it unless it is collaboration. But everything under there was VW. Everything really? and everything on the inside was VW. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I mean, I didn't take the cover off the engine to see if the engine was, but the battery case, the electrical wires, the terminals, the pin connectors, all of the intake hose set up, the front panel, the way the bonnet was released and was then secured also in the in the front panel, the seats, the interior buttons, the even the gear lever, everything was VW. That's interesting. Uh, so I'm wondering, yeah. is that, do you think in the factory there, the factory that's building parts for VW, do you think it's one, <laughs> one for us, one for them, one for us, one for them? We'll, just well, you'd like to think that you'd like to think that there's some sort of collaboration, but I, I, I also looking at it, feel like there's maybe enough of a slight differentiation that they can just say, oh no, yes. It's, we've just made it ourselves to look the same, but everything, yeah. like even the battery term. So the, the the guy, the guy, the same, my same, the same guy owns an Audi, and he sent me a picture of the battery and said, "I need a battery for my car. It won't start." And I just assumed, having saw the terminals and the way the battery was, that it was for his A4, yeah. which is exactly the same. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, it was exactly the same because I only took a. A ten mil socket and a thirteen mil socket and a quarter inch ratchet <laughs> with an extension. And fortunately, because it was a VW in the end, it, it, it I was I didn't have to go back for more tools. But uh, that would have been embarrassing. But I, I don't know if there's any kind of collaboration. I did think to myself I need to check into that one, but I just don't have the time. Man, you know this this sounds like a whole other business area for you. As you talk about loving to work on VWs, if these vehicles are coming here. You've got the VW yeah. experience. They're built on a VW platform or inspired by, by VW. Makes you guys experts in these vehicles. It's certainly got bits bolted onto them at a VW for sure. So, yeah. 
Interesting. Hey, speaking of interesting, did you uh, did you catch this note that I'd sent out your way about uh, Georgia and not the country, the state in the U.S.? What, I like that, yeah. what they're doing with their driver's licenses for for new drivers? I, I, I I'm still unable to fathom that you've got kids, teenagers, and uh, so approximately five thousand teenagers a week in Georgia go in to take their road tests to get their driver's licenses. And at this point, they just don't have the time to be doing this. So they're just going to give it to them. <laughs> well, if, I, if, I, if, you, if you asked me this, if you'd have asked me this 15 years ago, I'd have been like, yeah, definitely. Let's move to Georgia. But it's a little bit crazy yeah. to give people a license without actually having done the test. Although, you know, if there's a, if there's a, 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 a trusted sort of training process there. Everyone's had at least 50 hours training and what's the worst could happen kind of opinion then. Who knows? And they aren't George are opening up like almost fully. Yeah. 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 Even They're opening despite everything. The COVID. Yeah. So yeah, then this goes to show maybe they've got that kind of who cares. Uh, well, they're saying you have to have had your learner's permit for one year and a day. You have to have zero violations. You need to uh, also be over 18 years of age, but, and already have this, and you already have been having this in place. But as long as you've done that, they figure 30,000 people are going to get their licenses without doing that final test, without that final yeah, well, check. And I don't know. I'm thinking, <laughs> that, I'm thinking that the Senator for the state of Georgia is either involved with an insurance company based in Georgia <laughs> yeah, or has some kind of tie in with a, a fuel company yeah, yeah, because it seems very, very strange to me. Very, very strange. Yeah, me too. I, I just, I just can't believe it. So, although I guess no. they, I do, you know, they're not just giving them for free. You do have to pay to get the license. So there is, there is a yeah. financial kick in there as well, but Yeah. yeah. The, the other one that caught my attention this week was a YouTube video, and I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but I, I, you know, again, the, the China, some Chinese officials really uh, jumped on this one really quick, and essentially, it, it, it was in May, it was a vibrating bridge, so a suspension bridge over a, uh, so this was in uh, Humen, Humen Bridge in China, and yeah. there, there were cars on it. And the darn thing kind of looks like a golden gate, but a little bit, you know, not as long, but there were cars on it and it started to vibrate and you could see it going up and down like a wave. Yeah. They put the, um, it's cause they put the, for some reason they tried to shelter the cars from the wind. Yeah. And that just, that the, the shelter acted like a sail for the bridge, didn't it? Yeah. Unbelievable. Crazy. Unbelievable. Crazy. Well, I don't know about everybody, but what, what engineer signed that off? <laughs> You know, it's all good. It, well, it was it was the as we we constantly talk about on this this, this show. It was the intern who who got signed off on that one. The unpaid intern who clearly thought, "Oh no, this will be good. We're going to give this a try." Yeah, and it's yeah, it's it's yeah. it all comes back down to just like we were talking about with everything. You know, the engineering. You want to make sure that there's someone in there who's who's got their their head screwed on straight and there, and no one's cutting corners because as soon as you start cutting corners you just never know where it's going to go no and that, that that's one of those things where that that's over engineering over engineering as well which isn't great because they've they've obviously thought well we need to stop the wind for the cars the cars are probably feeling the wind or whatever it is but the cars have suspension they can sort of <laughs> absorb that but a concrete wall can't absorb any wind all that's going to do is move the whole bridge yeah yeah. Obviously, I mean, okay, hindsight, twenty twenty, and all that, but that sounds like something was missed there. <laughs> yeah, someone did not check off on this. Thing. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Who who made who, yeah. said, that's, who said that's okay? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Everyone yeah. thinks the other guy did. Yeah. So there. Yeah. Strange. The the last thing on my mind this week is you know the auto industry is really hurting when colored interiors are becoming the. The, the big selling item and everyone's starting to talk about some of the wacky colors that mainstream auto automakers are putting inside their cars. And this was a, an article out of motor trend and saying that, you know, the interiors of cars are no longer boring, you know, and they were actually, they're showing a picture in one of them of a Volvo XC, uh, XC 40 that I I've never seen such an orange colored interior in my life. And I was kind of going, you know, I kind of like it. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know about you selling me an orange interior, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not, not, not entirely sure about that, but no, it's the, uh, you know, like we said on this before, it, the exterior of cars now, because of mass production measures and, and the way things are made and, and obviously being very sort of cost conscious, a lot of cars look the same yeah. on the outside. And then when Tesla sort of came along and did the whole oversized iPad dashboard kind of thing, everybody realized that there was a heck of a lot of real estate on the rest of that dashboard that you didn't need to put switches and buttons on anymore that you can do something with. Yeah. Uh, and obviously seats and, and everything else. And I think there's a there's a move to, to stand apart by, by designing the interiors, you know? And, and hey, I'm all up for it. I just wish I'd take that opinion with the body as well. I, you know, I'm looking at uh, the interior of a 2020 Mercedes-Benz S-Class and I'm just kind of going, I want to give one of those a ride. <laughs> just Forget the color of the interior. I'm just looking at the interior and going, yeah. wow. I think there's there's yeah. more vents on the dash than anything else. That's all that's standing yeah. out to me. Everything else is so hidden and tucked away. What yeah, you- it's, always worth, it's always worth seeing the, the latest S-Class and E-Class when they come out because that's what dashboards are going to be based on for the next four or five years. I mean, it's it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah, you got to let me know when you get one of those into the workshop as well, so we can drop by and take a look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you know what, Glenn? I I think we. I, I it sounds to me like you must be at IKEA getting ready to get a an order. Yeah, I'm in the car park. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Well, we're gonna wrap up, then I'm gonna make the 16 missed calls return back. Hopefully, they weren't all from my wife. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Yeah, you're you're done for. Absolutely yeah. done for. Paul. Apologize if it is from her. If there's any from from your wife, apologize on my part that I, I you know, browbeat you into doing this podcast. But you know, it's been a lot of fun as always. It's all good. I enjoyed it. We're gonna get we're gonna get the list going of uh, items that people need to be checking into next week and things that are going wrong with their vehicles, from minor oil leaks to you know just checking stuff out. Because I gotta say, we've talked about it. We've been talking about it now for over a month maybe two months now, the number of vehicles yeah. that I see in the morning and at night when I take our, our dog out for a walk, they clearly have not been moved. You know, they haven't been washed. They haven't been moved. Eventually, someone's going to fire those things up. And I can only imagine that there's going to be some potential disasters. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll have to go. I'll have to come and do a, a walk a walk yeah. with you and I'll just leave some business cards <laughs> on exactly. the white of later. <laughs> <laughs> exactly Glenn I'm going to let you go this has been absolutely fantastic thank you very much cheers James not a problem <laughs> you have been listening to Potaholics and this has been Powerworks the car show with Glenn Power from Powerworks Automotive got any questions fire them through to us Potaholics with a K at gmail.com. Hit us across the socials, Potaholics with a K. And of course, www.potaholics.com is our website. By the way, don't forget, whatever stream you're listening to us on, give us a rating, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll do it all again really soon. You are listening to Potaholics. <laughs>